Hello and welcome to MongoDB for Python developers. Throughout this course, we're going to learn how to connect model for and build applications with MongoDB. And we're going to do this with Python. We're going to look at the straightforward lowest level way of doing things with PyMongo. And we're going to look at mapping classes through an, what's called an ODM, think ORM for Mongo, an ODM to MongoDB with Mongo Engine. And these come together to make a great combination. So let's begin by talking about document databases. How do they work? Well, document databases in some ways are very much like standard relational databases. They have what you would think of as columns in that relational world, title, course ID, and duration in seconds here, for example, but it also has nested data. So in a relational database, we might have a lectures table that has some kind of foreign key constraint back to a chapter in this example we have on the screen here. But in fact, in a relational database, we can embed those lectures inside of the chapter object. Why is this good? Well, often we spend so much time and energy building up an object hierarchy in our application and then tearing that apart into a bunch of little pieces, what's called third normal form, basically normalizing our data in a relational database and then building it back up, taking it back apart. And this object relational impedance mismatch makes it hard for us to reason about our code, makes it a little bit less intuitive and so on. So with document databases, we can model our data the same way our application wants to use that data. We also have more flexibility in the schema, which means that deploying a new version of our application often does not require some kind of migration script and downtime. No, we just deploy the new version and the document database adapts to it. So document databases, in my opinion, are the best way to build applications for the 80% case, right? Maybe you have some edge case where that doesn't make a lot of sense, but most apps really benefit from using document databases. And which one happens to be the most popular, the most widely used? Well, you can guess, it's probably MongoDB, given this course, right? However, you probably didn't guess how much more popular MongoDB is relative to its other NoSQL friends. So we've got CouchDB, this orange one, which is way down there and sort of not even trending well. We've got RavenDB, which is basically not used. Cassandra, which kind of peaked around 2016 and is heading down. We got MongoDB just much, much more popular than these. If you want to experiment or play around with this data yourself, you can check out the link at the bottom. So MongoDB is really, really popular. It's by far the most popular, widely used document database. It's also really loved. So one of my favorite places to get insight into the developer community is Stack Overflow's yearly survey. So on the 2017 yearly survey, you can see MongoDB appears very high up the rank for most loved technology. And if you look at the little description at the bottom, this represents the number of developers who are currently using a technology and really enjoy working with it. So MongoDB is right up there among all the top. Now, what about wanted? In fact, MongoDB just dominates the wanted category. So this is people who are not currently using MongoDB or currently using whatever technology is listed here, but they wish they were, right? So MongoDB is definitely highly, highly desired for the people who are not using it and very much loved by the people who are. So let's talk about what we're gonna cover in this course. We're gonna start by getting your machine set up and ready to go. It's important that you follow along in this course, that you do the code examples, that you play with the database, right? That's how we learn as developers. So the first thing we're gonna do is walk through how to set up your operating system with MongoDB and the various other tools that we'll talk about later. Whether you're using Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, we have a video that shows you how to set this up correctly on your machine. Next, we'll dig into what is NoSQL, why do we want to use it? What are document databases? I touched a little bit on this in the beginning, but we'll go deep into document databases, how they work, and the trade-offs and benefits that we get from them. We'll then start work with MongoDB proper. We're going to fire up MongoDB, and we're going to connect to it with its native shell and understand its low-level native query syntax. If this was a relational database, this would be kind of like studying SQL, the, the T-SQL language. But MongoDB doesn't use SQL. It uses its own query language, which is easily understandable, but it's it's not the same. Now, this is actually going to be in JavaScript for the most part. You might be thinking, this is a Python course. I don't want to learn JavaScript. Well, for the most part, we're going to write our code 
in Python. And we're not going to do anything in JavaScript, but you need to understand how the query syntax of the various tools and libraries in Python ultimately map down to what you could work with in the management tools. And in the management tools, it's JavaScript and the native query syntax. We'll make sure that we cover that really well here as a great foundation. Next up, we're going to talk about modeling data with documents rather than tables. You may have heard of third normal form and modeling through normalizing data in a relational database. And to some degree, that knowledge carries forward into document databases. But there are certainly many other trade-offs in different types of modeling scenarios that you want to follow. You certainly don't want to just normalize your document database. You'd be missing all of the benefits and getting some of the drawbacks potentially. So we'll see that in document databases in general, and MongoDB in particular, you model your data a little bit differently and have different trade-offs and considerations. And we'll talk about that here. At this point, it's time to start writing some code with Python. So we'll begin at the primary lowest level that we can work with MongoDB, and this is PyMongo. So here we're going to work in a query language that is very, very similar to MongoDB's native JavaScript language, but we're going to do it from Python. And this works great. Basically, you're exchanging dictionaries, and it's, it's very fast and efficient. However, sometimes it makes a lot more sense to not just pass loosely typed dictionaries around, but rather rich classes with lots of functionality and structure. So we're going to also talk about Mongo Engine, which is an ODM object document mapper for MongoDB. Think of this as an ORM, but because there's no relational bit, it's not a relational database, we call it document. So ODM for MongoDB and Mongo Engine is one of the best ones. It works really well in Python 3 and Python 2 has a whole bunch of features and different things you can add to your application on top of what MongoDB the database itself provides. For example, like type checking, things like that. So really, really nice. And you'll see that Mongo Engine is a great addition to what you might be doing. Once we get the programming side in place, we we'll want to take our database and add tons of data to it. So we're going to take a simple example that we were playing with before and add something that has effectively millions or at least a million records in it. And then we're going to start interacting with it from Mongo Engine, just as well could have been PyMongo, right? We're going to start interacting with this database with lots of data and see that it doesn't perform quite as well as we hoped, maybe as well as all the hype around MongoDB being fast would make you expect, right? So we're going to see that we can take this server and it's kind of okay on its own if we left it alone and we'll make it like 500 times faster for some totally reasonable operations. So we're going to talk about the various knobs and tools we have to make MongoDB really fast. They're not hard to do, but they are not automatic. So you'll definitely want to learn about those. And finally, we're going to take all of what we've learned and deploy it into a cloud multi-server environment. So we're going to create what would be a fake web app. We'll just have a little Python script that stands in for the web app. Put that on one server up in a cloud computing environment. On another one, we're going to set up a production hardened MongoDB server. And we're going to make sure that MongoDB production server is totally locked down, running as safe as possible. There are a lot of non-obvious things about running MongoDB in production, and we want to make sure that it's working really well for us. So we're going to go through this section and do probably five or six different things to get MongoDB ready to be our production database. And that's it. This is what we cover in the course. I think it's a really comprehensive introduction to MongoDB from Python, and I really hope you enjoy it. I really enjoyed creating it for you. So let's touch a little bit on the tools that we're going to use. We talked about Python, PyMongo, and Mongo Engine as the programming language. Obviously, we're going to use MongoDB as the database, but you also learn a few other things during this course. You'll learn about a management tool called RoboMongo. RoboMongo is hands down the best way to work with MongoDB from the client side. It gives you all the power of the command line interface that comes with MongoDB, but a great GUI kind of wrapped around it. That's all I'm going to say about it now, but it's really fabulous, and I think you'll enjoy it. We'll see that we can even use RoboMongo to manage securely our production environment on a remote server. We're going to be using PyCharm as the IDE for editing all of our Python code. So you'll learn a whole bunch of things about PyCharm. If you don't want to use PyCharm, you want to use Sublime Text or Emacs or whatever, it's totally fine, but we're going to be using PyCharm and it's really great. I'll show you many of the tricks and techniques in there just as a way of using it. And finally, when we get to our deployment step, we're going to be working with Ubuntu and you'll learn how to set up MongoDB 
properly in a production environment on Ubuntu. Finally, you might be wondering, hey, who is this guy talking to me anyway? Here I am. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Michael. You can find me on Twitter, where I'm at M. Kennedy. And just a little bit of my background. So I run the Talk Python to Me podcast, as well as I'm the founder and written many of the courses at Talk Python Training, for example, this one. And I'm even in the MongoDB Masters program, which is a group of about 30 people who are external advisors to MongoDB who work pretty closely with the teams there and give them feedback on how MongoDB is working in the real world, in our environments. So I hope to bundle up all of this experience and package it into this course and really give you some great takeaways. I'm so happy you joined my course. I'm looking forward to teaching you a bunch of stuff. Let's get started.